Hey everyone, in this week's video I'm going to be moving my Campanatus castaneus colony from this Tar Heel Ants Fallen Fortress you see here into the new and improved Ants Australia Waitong Size 3 nest. It has been a few months since I updated you on this colony. Last time was around March when they came out of hibernation. Now in the middle of July, this is the colony. They have around 250 workers and they have more eggs and pupa than I've ever seen. Now for those of you who do remember what they looked like three months ago, you could be pretty surprised at how much they've grown and honestly I am too. I've heard that in uh, Camponatus Colony's third year, they can grow from around 100 workers to well over 500 or 1000, and they are well on their way to doing that. So I'm excited for the future of this colony, but as of now they need a new nest. Now you may notice in these clips that I am filming on a different surface, and that is because I moved relatively recently and I had to leave behind the countertop that I used to film my videos on. Tell me in the comments section below if you like this or my other surface better and that'll help me improve my videos later on. Right off the bat you can notice a lot of differences between the old and new style of Waitong nest. Besides the different levels of chamber depths, you can also see that it has a lot more of a sleek design, which I personally like a lot better. Now, the size 3 Waitong nest has two uh, chambers for watering, and it also has two nest entrances. The reason there are two watering chambers for the larger styles of nests is because you need to switch off between each watering chamber every time you water the nest so that it prevents mold growth and keeps a more stable humidity level throughout the nest. The reason why you can see here that I have watered both is because when you first get the nest it is pretty much bone dry so you want to get as much moisture in there as possible to make it more appealing for them. In this clip, I am going to be taking out the nestmate from the Fallen Fortress and attaching it to one of the two nest entrances for the new nest. Now, what you want to do when you move colonies, which some of you probably already know, is to leave the old nest in the light and cover the new nest in darkness. This tactic is used because the colony is most likely going to be used to the darkness and they will be alarmed when there is all of a sudden a bunch of light in their nest and in turn they will seek out the darkness, which is where the new nest comes in. Every once in a while you just want to lift it up like I am doing here just to see their progress, and since I am filming I have to do this more often, which could possibly disturb the colony, but I'm trying to do it as little as possible throughout the move. Some of you may have noticed from my last video that it has been a couple of days longer than uh, the day I said I was going to publish this video, and that is because this colony just would not move. They were like that for about a week, so I decided to put the old nest in the outworld that the new nest is attached to and take off the glass from the old formicarium. Now, doing this will alarm the ants because it will change the temperature and humidity levels in their nest, but it will not harm them in any way. What this does is it basically makes them force to move, and this basically just speeds up the process. But it could be stressful to the colony, so don't do this unless if you have to. And with Campanatus colonies, I've noticed that it takes an extra long time for them to move, and unfortunately I had to get this video out as soon as possible. But as of this recording, the colony is doing as well as ever, so that's a good thing. Here is the colony a couple of hours later. You can see they've nestled in the nest nicely. I have a test tube attached to the tubing which connects to the outworld, and this is because uh, if I ever go on vacation, then they will need an external water source in case their water source runs out, so that is what the test tube is for. I also have a biformic liquid feeder so I don't have to feed them as much because with bigger colonies they get more, I guess, aggressive whenever you mess with their outworld and take out like their feeding dish. So if you fill that up pretty high then you can also use that for when you go on vacation. You can see the colony here has taken up a decent amount of the nest but they still have room to grow. 
Here is my hand in comparison. Now for those of you who still are sticking around to finish the video, which thank you by the way, here is some bonus content. This is some footage of my Camponatus Castaneus Queen laying an egg. And this might not seem very interesting or convenient for me to show, but this is really rare footage. Camponatus queens lay eggs in batches, and usually they can wait days to weeks in between egg laying batches. And for bigger queens, they usually lay more often, but they don't lay around the clock like some other queens do. So a couple of hours after the move and the queen is already laying eggs, that is a very good sign. That means that they have adapted to this nest nicely and the queen is very healthy. When the egg is finished laying, it rests on the queen's gaster and it waits for a worker to pick it up, which you're about to see here. The worker then cleans the egg and puts it with the pile of other eggs, and then they wait to turn into larva, pupa, and then adult workers. I really hope you all enjoyed this week's episode because it took a while to film and even longer to edit. Um, I will be uploading next Sunday like the new usual, and I apologize for the lack of uploads recently. Thank you all for watching, and I will see all of you in my next video on Sunday. Peace.